So we, we see interesting bands coming out, not leaning on, similar to BLG of taking away all the aggressive AD carries. So we're gonna see what trade is able to come through. I love the idea of going towards the Talia. You'd expect the Rek'Sai Pryo to be pretty high as well, especially with TF being taken off the board. Again, those have really been the two bread and butters for Flandre on JDG. Interesting to see the Zeri priority still there for Ruler. It did not work out for them in the previous series between these two teams. We'll see if the strategy has changed slightly today. A lot of criticism levied towards that team on their inability to adapt across the draft. We'll keep our eyes on that across today. The Nami locked in alongside the Lucian though, and then Azir into the mid lane. Not for JDG. Like I said, I feel like if they'd be following the, the trends they've shown so far, the getting Flandre on his comfort pick right here. Also could look to potentially lean towards support, you know, get that Lulu like they're now hovering to just be able to answer in that bot lane 2v2 matchup. But I do have some fear because like we were talking about, it really feels like TS figured it out of just picking more aggressive, you know, scale a bit earlier like the Lucian and be able to just hammer out through the bot lane. So we're gonna have to see Ruler and Missing really step it up to not just get completely outmatched by Jack and Mako. I'm quite glad it's Zeri Lulu, not Zeri Rel. We saw Zeri Rel three times yeah. <laughs> in the previous series. It didn't work. I'm really glad that we're not just seeing that again. Uh, and a different mid laner from Yagao as well compared to that previous series. I'm looking towards that top lane, and you know, you were already talking about the potential of that Rek'Sai. I'm a little bit nervous if JDG lock in the Rek'Sai because with top esports banning the TF, which has been a really good answer into the Rek'Sai, I feel like they want Flandre to pick it. I feel like top esports might have some of the sleeves here. I mean, the question is if they'd go back to that Urgot, right? Or if JDG would want to preemptively take that away right now. Because then if so, right, you're kind of falling back to those generic tanks. Uh, the 369, of course, feels very confident to pull out at any time in any matchup. But no, instead going to deny the Poppy instead. So they're saying, hey, they are not afraid of anything 369 can pull out to answer. I think it's going to be a nocturne ban. I think they're going to try and get rid of any junglers that can deal with a side lane. No, okay, since now. I was going to say, like, maybe it's uh, another, like you say, Urgot, maybe with the Quinn angle again if a Red Ectin comes out. But it looks like it will be that Rek'Sai for Flandre. Not too surprising there. Perhaps leaving it into last pick to see what's available. Uh, again, I'd be very surprised. You even think back to EDG's World Championship run, run, right? And Flandre very much lent on the graves. Like, Flandre will find his one favorite champion, and if it is up, he'll go to it. It makes sense. Rek'Sai incredibly strong right now. The Pryo gives you, even feels like it scales super well just as a generic tank. Now for TS. Again, not a whole lot of great options to be able to play out through top side. If they go for the Sejuani, I mean, again, if, if they wanted to even go towards the Renekton, which, which does lose, at least you have some sort of pairing there and, and just giving themselves more frontline. So this should allow Cream to hopefully not lean into that tankier engage Azir route and just let him provide pure DPS for TES. Yeah. Of all of the champions that can punish Rek'Sai, I'd say the Sejuani is pretty good with the CC chain. Okay. Dare I mention it, it's being covered. We've already seen it once, and it was glorious. The Urgot is locked in again for 369. And I'm surprised, I'm surprised JDG did ban it like we were talking about in that last ban. Now for JDG, needing jungle right now, thinking about the Rel, they lock it in. So strong 5v5s, right? You have a lot of AoE coming out from the Rel plus the Talia to just give Ruler the space to unload. But still, TS, I like the 2v2 they were able to get in bot. You mentioned it, we saw 369 do great in this matchup topside. There might be a lot of prios that Tien can play with and, and really deny Kanavi from, from finding the aggression that he wants. This will be 369's 10th ever Urgot game in professional play. He's won six of those nine games played. And we saw one very recently going uh, five, one, and three up against Billy Billy, up against Bin's own. Uh, Rek'Sai in that top side. It's a matchup that it seems 369 is very comfortable on. We already talked about these top laners. We talked about how 369 has been incredible this year and Flandre is up against it. And now 369 having the counter pick top as well. That feels like it could be a huge issue for JDG. Yeah, I feel like if JDG get off to a lead, we saw in their last series that they were incredible at playing out the map through mid game and being able to choke JDG out, not give them the team fights they were looking for. So. A lot in my mind is going to be up to, especially a gal in this series with those Weaver's Walls to really unlock the rest of JDG.
We'll find out if they can unlock this map, if they can unlock their teammates, and if Ruler can scale into this game. Ruler leaning on the Zeri once more. They tried it three times against Top Esports in their first series against them, and they lost three times with the pick. But changing up the mid lane, the Rel going into the jungle this time, but all out aggression on the bot side from Top Esports. It's time to get into the series, the modern classic of the LPL. It's Top Esports versus JDG in the lower brackets. Moving straight in to start with JDG, trying to get any information that they can. Missing has moved all the way forward in the lane, maybe to try and get a small advantage for the level one trade. But it looks like jungle is going to be starting opposite here with Kanavi on the top side and Tien looking to start on his Raptors. Yeah, so not really signaling much so far. They know exactly what Yigao is doing here. So Cream going to be able to find a decent trade, help more than a decent trade back. And right, looking at TES, we know it's really not going to be a game about mid, but Okay. I was you know, gonna say I don't, I don't know how much you really want to straight up two v two at this point in the game, but really I want to see it. You know, I, I wouldn't mind if you know, we had some straight up two v two. But like you talked about missing, taking a very aggressive position, just trying to find the better of the level one, and this spot lane's really gonna mean a lot. Yeah. Especially then if, if they could just start getting some turret plates on Jackie quite early. The nice thing for TS is Ergon is someone you could play around, give some pressure to, look for those ganks in top, but also very self-sustainable in that top lane, has the fleet footwork and will be able to get through even without any jungle attention if Tian just dedicates his time to playing a bot side focused game. Yeah. It feels like both side lanes are very self-sufficient, right? Very proficient at finding individual leads and have matchups where they can do that. Ruler diving over the wall to punish this early level two that they managed to achieve for themselves. Good trade as well as missing steps forward, but gets ignited for his trouble and kicked away with just under 200 HP. Ruler still hammering away this entire time. But as level two is hit by top esports, Tien's moving into the bottom side of the map. JDG, they've got to be cautious. The ward now spots Tien as he moves in, but Ruler and Missing are in all kinds of trouble. Both flashes available, but that's all that remains. Knock up onto Ruler as the stun is being stacked, and it's first blood into the hands of Jackie Love. Jackie Love and Mako making JDG think they're getting the better end of the trade, and they pull Tien down. Great start for the bot lane of TES. And I feel like Ruler and Missing wanted this so badly. They were pushing really hard to find an early advantage in this lane, but just overstepping the mark in Tien. Great pathing, understands that he can punish. Exactly. I feel like a big part of it was JG Ruler and Missing knowing exactly how the last series went down and how, how dominant they were last year as a 2v2. Really trying to find the advantage early, not give Jackie Love and Mako any shot in this lane, but sadly, it ends up biting them in the end. So let's take another look. I mean, Ruler, really, I love how aggressive they are at the level two, right? Getting that advantage. I feel like they just overstayed their welcome on this. Yeah, and I, I, you know, it's all going to, to TS's plan. I love how aggressive they're playing here and the fact that Jackie goes back in for some trades. This should really be the tell that Tien was already gonna make his way down. And then the patience in which Tien plays this, right? Uh, waiting, draws out the flash, keeps moving forward and Ruler really just has no way of being able to escape. We can see the whole time too, Pryo in top for 369. We talked about it can be self-sufficient and still be able to maintain pressure, not giving a whole lot of openings for JDG to look to answer. Certainly not. It's a couple of dives forward and missing once again as well. I I'm expecting full on aggression in this bottom side based on the first couple of levels that we've seen. It doesn't seem like Ruler and Missing are willing to give up any level of control. And that's one thing about Lucian and Army that People often forget, they think this is an early aggressive lane, but it does take a few levels to really start to hit your big power spikes. Yeah, yeah. Level three, having that full combo online is, is really where it starts to kick off. And even then, I mean, once you hit first item, it is such a massive power spike. Maybe not the same as uh, as it used to be now that we are in the static shiv meta, but still just such a ridiculous item. Once Jackie Love uh, gets that online, really no way Ruler and Missing should be able to answer any trades in the 2v2, and so far, TS keeping it nice and simple 
Uh, Tien should be able to get these scrubs pretty much uncontested. And I have to say, one of the things that does give me cause for concern in this series is how good Top Esports Macro has been across the course of the year. Because we, we think way back, you know, to Top Esports versus JDG, all the way back to 2020, it was like the Brains versus Brawn matchup, right? Where JDG were all about the macro, Top Esports were all about just outplaying individually. It feels like Top Esports may be winning in both categories these days, although Kanavi at least finds one grub for himself. The two junglers just kind of look at each other from the backs of their mounts and then walk their separate ways. Ruler taking a hefty trade from Jackula. Yeah, not going to be enjoying that. It was somewhat answered back by Mako, but as Mako showed them right after, he can always just heal himself. And uh, the disparity is only going to be that much greater. But this is what we wanted, right? Yigao hitting the level 6 mark, Kanavi leaning through, which gives him even more of a window to start just hovering down in Fog of War, getting Vision. And hopefully soon we could start seeing him really find an influence on the map. Again, Tien's pathing, though, does lead him to be down here, oh, too. No. Bad time to dash forward for Jackie Love. Dodges the laser oh. here. Has flash available. And Kanavi just can't get in. There's not really a way to punish. Yeah, not... I don't know. It looked like he was about to charge in with the dismount. But now Tien actually makes it down. Again, he was already on his way. Uh, knew that JDG would be looking for a gank on this timing, but just, here we go. I think we're just going to scrap here. Yagao's moving over and he's level 6. The Weaver's Wall available here is Yagao trying to win out the Honey Fruit oh. Battle on the top side. The bubble hits too, though. Tien moves in, but Tien's just not that tanky yet. And he ends up going down. The Weaver's Wall denies any follow-up from top esports. Yeah, sadly, like you said, not having that beef. The Weaver's Wall completely sectioning him off, so really having nowhere that he could run. So JDG gonna welcome that pickup. Luckily, at least Tien didn't blow a flash or anything. So if he gets himself in a dicey situation again, it won't be as damning, but you're gonna be feeling really good about that, especially going on to Ruler. Yeah, I mean, it couldn't be a better target for you really than the Zeri. Second of the look, it felt like a bit of an odd fight, honestly, Top Esports positioning very aggressively. Yagao moves over and him and Cream sort of have a bit of a back and forth. This bubble, I think, sort of baits Tien in a little bit. Yeah, and all that damage going on to Kanavi, oh, you see it. No, no Q when once the Weaver's Wall comes out. TS Botlane already has to start backing off, so even if the, the trade could have been somewhat equalized onto the Rel, no opportunity. So unfortunately, no aftershock there for Tien, because he never got that Q off, he never stacked up his E, so just ends up being so, so squishy. Nice punish, though, from JDG. Great use of the Weaver's Wall from Yagao. Good to see Yagao getting out on the map early as well, even though he doesn't end up getting an assist for it. Like, that wall was obviously a crucial part in getting the kill onto Tien. A knock-up from it actually being a part of the CC chain, which I feel like Talia should get some assist for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, unless I just missaw it and it didn't actually hit the knock-up, maybe you do, but I mean, I'm even, sure even knocked up. Even regardless, like you're saying, it had an impact. It, it, it made it so Jackie Love and Mako really had no chance of even being able to return the damage. But now we got to focus on the dragon because it's been a, it's been strange, right? I feel like playoffs so far, it's been a lot of really early five to six minute Drake takes. Start getting those stacked up right away if you're the more early advantageous team to, to force that earlier fight at Soul. But I guess we, with both teams having semblances of, of scaling, maybe not as much so as it would look for TS with the fact that we do have cream. Uh, going that more like engaged tank oriented a zero out but still definitely having some damage to lean on with the Lucian. Well, even a really awkward spot with Kanavi in the area but he clears the ward walks away they manage to kill the cannon and it will be a reset coming through from Jackie Love and Mako though that might just be the stack ship pick, uh, picked up now or Jackie Love is 369 getting some really good trades this Urgot is starting to come online and TN is moving up towards the top side this could be an angle for 369. That fear beyond death leveled. He's level eight at this point. This is dangerous for Flandre as Tien starts to move in. Just lobs out the ult, gets a flash, and uh, they'll just back away. Yeah, I mean, getting a flash and a TP off of one ult. I think you absolutely take that now. JNG made the correct response, trying to go right down to Dragon. But again, TS are on top of it. You know, hey, mid laner TP'd up here. They should have no ability to look for this objective and pushes them all the way down, which might even give Tien the window to get all three of these and give TS five grubs. It has been spotted here, as you saw Yagao dropping a ward. In the meantime, Kanavi wants an angle on the mid lane. Cream the target, Magnet Storm comes on in. The flick back is there as well. Can he get out with a shield? Empress divide, the dash, the shield doesn't even need to flash. 
No, he's doing completely fine. At the same token, we'll see how many... So Tien only ends up being able to get up to four. So sadly, not the five grubs that they were hoping for to get some of those mites online. But still, you'll take that cream, not even having to lose a summoner. Worth mentioning that even without the five or six grubs, like Urgot in a side late later on, good lord, can he use those grubs uh, to great effect. We'll see how much 369 actually gets to side lane, whether he's just going to have to be with the team being a part of those team fights. I'm very cautiously uh, cautious. I'm very curious about how uh, this top lane matchup is going to go in the long run. Obviously, much better than the previous time we saw this matchup, where 369 was monstrously ahead. But there's still time. Top esports haven't really been focusing on that top lane in the way they did last time. No, and you know, I think it should be fine uh, regardless especially Urgot, right? You, you you have the percent HP damage coming out from your passive with the different shotgun legs. You have some nice consistent ways to be able to trade throughout the game and it'll get pretty tanky himself. So should be able to continuously fare well in that 1v1. The thing about Flanger right, is going to be all that utility he's bringing with, with the knockup and just the annoyance of his passive. How many times he can re-enter a fight, but we're refocusing around bot side. Both junglers about to meet up in river for this, this crab, but TS right now are the ones who have the first lean from mid, but JDG... I want to give this up for free. I mean, they won one fight in this choke already this game. Good culling from Jackie Love, but Kanavi, without all down, sees an angle potentially to fight. Ruler are missing a little bit chunked, but the wild growth does mean that they're relatively safe. Mako gets himself a bit of movement speed, but the Weaver's Wall comes down. Mako might have to flash here, but the Polymorph denies it, and he's stuck in no man's land. JDG with a great pick. Yeah, JDG able to catch Mako out. It feels like the Flash would have really had to preempt the play as you started to see the Weaver's Wall come down, but that's going to lead JDG into being able to pick up the Strike. And it's nice, right? They're continuously able to defend their uh, pink wards in that tri brush, which constantly gives them the aggressive angle to be able to contest. Really nice play from JDG. Two Weaver's Walls, two picks off of the back of them so far. And it leads to that Drake. Nice stuff from JDG. And they do have a ever so slight gold lead to start us off. Oh, Tien. They want to keep reclaiming this vision. Again, they know these words are around here, but JDG are still three members strong. This feels aggressive, but Jackie Love has returned to the scene in that bottom lane. He's going to crash this wave on in as Mako. He's got an absolute feast for himself. Three whole wards to kill all by himself. He's going to be oh. happy with that one, but Kanavi's moving over. Flashes away from the bubble and back to back deaths for Mako. This time he flashes, but to no avail. And Top Esports are kicked out once more. And nice planning around the, the aggression and the investment towards Bonsai. Just just the, the small inkling uh, that they can burst him out before any help's going to be able to arrive. They get a summoner on top of it too. JDG coming in with a much better plan today than their first series. This feels so much cleaner than the first series. And also the fact that Ruler is 2-1-1 one, and one on the Zeri. Like you picked the scaling pick and you're also sort of winning bot lane. I mean, maybe winning lane is a, a little, not quite the right phrase for it, considering how team-based it's been. But even still, you're ahead with a lead on a Zeri. You're going to be very happy with how this early game's gone. And I feel like that's been the biggest pivot, right? Is it, it's been a lot of like reaction plays, counter ganks around that bot lane, never really over aggressing for too much themselves. Like sure, they did in the 2v2 very early on, but since then it's always been about calling Kanavi, getting Kanavi down there in preempting what TES did to them last time. Feels like they've come in with a really solid game plan. The question is, will it keep working? Because one thing we've seen consistently from top esports this year is that they're quite willing to be proactive and and find creative ways to outplay on the map. That's been something that they've really excelled at compared to most teams in the LPL. And I do wonder when we get to that mid game, that's really been the strength for top esports. It's not been about just lane difference a lot of the time. It has been about macro. I want to see good macro from JDG. I want to see them be able to convert this small lead that they've got in the early game. Perhaps an angle for that would be the Drake that comes up in another two and a half minutes time. Yeah, and you know, I think it's going to have to come off the back of a 5v5 fight so they can get themselves in an advantageous position where the Lucian is really having a lot of threat on the mid-wave contest. So whether it's going to be Herald now... How is Jackie Love ahead in gold? How the hell is Jackie Love ahead in gold? I guess he's got a minus CS lead. He got a couple of plates as well. Only but... one. I, I, was, I was actually going to bring that up that 
surprisingly enough, I think this is like the least amount of plates we've seen taken in, in like the first 50 minutes in any of our latest series. I think it was only like one to both sides. There was one in bot for TS and maybe one in mid for JDG. Yeah, not a whole bunch of gold taken early. TP's coming out as the Herald on the map here. Stun comes on through this time, the CC chain in favor of top esports, but Kanabi is so tanky in the triple flank back, sets it all up, but Ruler's knocked in the middle of everyone, and 369, Negan's galore is loving every second of this. Cream chasing off Flandre as Yagao desperate to escape with his life, but 369 ain't letting him go anywhere. Pulled back in and blasted to another realm. Huge play by TES coming out with four kills, only losing two of their own members. Honestly, though, much a bit of a highlight reel for both sides. And who even who came out with the Herald? JDG, yeah, Kanavi getting the smite in the end. We could see Gao was the one who managed to pick it up before getting out. If I really want to see the replay of that fight, because I'm pretty sure Yagao got a triple yeah. knockback to start that fight off. It looked like he was the one playing this here to start the fight. Yeah, you you have like him going in at the same time as Kanavi and, and, and the shuffle really just being there. We're gonna get to see it from 369. Okay, never mind. We're, we're not seeing it from 369's POV. Yeah, I think I think like you said though. So CC coming out right away. Things looking good, but yeah, it starts off with Kanavi allowing the flick back with the seismic shove to come up from Yigao. Instantly Cream tries to send them back, but look at this Urgot. 369 is left unattended on the back half of that fight and easily finds access onto the squishy carries. Yeah, it was 369 getting into the backside, and Cream was still auto-attacking with soldiers the whole time, because, yeah, sure, Rek'Sai is auto-attacking him, but, like, how scared is Cream of Rek'Sai auto-attacking him? This is Grass Bazir, he's not exactly squishy, and uh, just happily sat there, gets knocked back, gives him the opportunity to use his own ultimate and uh, counter Yagao's own knockback. So now... Importantly, Rule is still getting more gold off the back of these fights. 4-2-1 and one now on that Zeri, but it's two items for Jackie Love as the Drake spawned. JDG do have Herald, so that's something we have to keep in mind to see if they try to use it to pull attention anyway, but no, they're actually just going to be behind, and it looks like they're saying, hey, it's fine. We've already gotten our one Drake. Again, we have the Zeri scaling that we can lean on, so we're just going to already start playing towards the, the opposite half of the map. So Tienel's uh, secured this. You can see Yagao moving up. Herald slammed into the mid lane. So mid lane tier one taken. It could be a top lane tier one as well. As you can see, both solo lane is there for JDG. But that does open an opportunity for top esports to answer in the mid lane. And there are a couple of pings on towards that second tower as well. This could be an aggressive push forwards. The laser doesn't quite land. The Grubs paying dividends. And look at the damage that 369 is doing to this tower. Cream dives in looking for an ultimate. But it doesn't matter because it's missing caught by the ult of TN. 369 charges forward. Top Esports get two towers and a pick. And it's small moments like this where TS completely outplays JDG on the map. Like you said, getting so much two turrets in mid, getting the kill, getting a Drake. What a huge swing for them when JDG had had been slightly up in gold and, and keeping it competitive. We're going to see exactly how it all goes down. I mean, I love Tien waiting in the wings. They try to get the pick on Ruler, aren't going to be able to manage. But the ult from Tien's enough to chain that into Mako's tidal wave and, and get the damage there. And hell, you know, it doesn't really matter who the pick came across because you'd already gotten what you were aiming for anyway in those two turrets. It does feel like the pick potential of this composition could easily be underestimated, but the CC chain you can pull off on one target off of the back of TN's ultimate, and then the follow-up from, like, your culling, your Azir's long-range damage, all of the CC coming out from the Nami, but then 369, worst-case scenario, you just get him to a quarter HP. Well, that's enough, because 369 will land his ult during the CC chain and grab that kill, so it does feel like this is a yeah. almost long-range assassination composition. The person who has to really feel threatened is Yigao, right? Because rulers on the Zeri, sure, there's a lot of CC on the side of, of TS, but it's not it's not Vile, it's not Maokai throwing out his ult, which covers a wide range, right? All of it can be dodged uh, if <laughs> Ruler does play immaculately, or even just far back, like we saw in the turret dive, right? Cream wanted to get him, but he couldn't. But Yigao, I mean, if they hone in on him, he really has no chance of getting out without a splash being up. Yeah, missing two, which is a, a scary prospect because missing kind of struggled in the first iteration of this matchup this year. Or I say this year. Obviously, they played during the regular split, but of playoffs at least. I love that we get best of 10 between these two teams. It feels yeah. 
A little bit like Destiny, doesn't it? On honestly, we can even like reference that that series in regular season because people might find it strange. Of, hey, didn't JDG beat TS? Why? Why you guys make it sound so TS favored? But back then was like right in the middle of all the smolder hype, which kind of oh fit how JDG want to play perfectly because every game was was smolder versus Zeri or or matchups along those, right? And that's where you can see JDG really thrive uh, when when they aren't getting pulled into that knife fight in the first ten minutes of the game. I kind of repressed that memory. I'm, I'm a little sad that you <laughs> brought it up. I sort of was pleasantly... Isn't it kind of weird, though? Like, unaware of Smolder's like, existence again. Like, how how quickly it came and also how quickly <laughs> yeah. it saw the door. Yeah, it kind of just, like, completely shifted the standings and then went away again. The culling on missing! Oh, <laughs> my lord! Jackalov nearly one-shots him just off of the culling alone. Yeah, just... I mean, just being level 11, two ranks of the ult crazy last whisper in tow as well but not this large i guess mandate on mako like a whole lot of ways yeah. to make sure that jackie love is getting out the prime damage and i still feel like this power spike is really the bread and butter of lucian's comfort zone yeah that's exactly what i was about to say as well it's like this is where lucian really comes into his own this next like sort of five ten minutes is just so strong from lucian and this is also where top esports have been strongest as a team this is the point in the game where they have really excelled across the course of this year is this mid-game macro their ability to play the map their ability to really really punish when someone misplays like a lot of the the plays that we saw in the previous series between these two teams a lot of it was catching players from JDG out on map movements, just maneuvering better and predicting what JDG were going to do and then punishing those tiny little mistakes. We have seen those mistakes, you know, like rectified in a lot of ways by JDG today, which again is nice. We're, we're seeing a very competitive game one. JDG still by no means down and out, especially now. Rule are going to be on the Navori. Really pivotal point for Azari with how ability reliant you are. It's really just going to be about making sure you can keep him safe. We've seen the combos there of JDG being able to set up the fights, right? Kanavi, yeah. huge ultimate earlier on. You got obviously able to keep up with the seismic shove. We need to make sure that Ruler doesn't get lost in the shuffle like he did last time around. Yeah, and I feel like that... I feel like the seismic shove from Yagao, while it was really good, sort of baited JDG in a little bit in the previous play. I think maybe overestimate their own burst damage and... Uh being punished for it. It's top Esports now posturing towards this next Drake. It's Mountain Soul, which either team would be quite happy with. Plenty of frontline to work with. Top Esports making sure to clear as much vision as possible. JDG doesn't feel like they want to let this go without a fight. Jackalove dives in for a bit of poke. They're going to keep looking for it. I mean, with the gal's wall, there would be a world they could section them off, but they're exposing themselves to be engaged on. Alt lands onto Flandre, Kanavi dives into the mix, but he's just not tanky enough. Gets in 1v5, the knock up on Cream denies the ultimate and the polymorph as well. Flandre saving his AD carry as Ruler is trying to stack the front to back continuing. But Top Esports still a man up, muscling forwards and return to the Drake. It looks like they're, they're hoping to get the resets out for their soul laners to TP them back in. Jackie Love gets to the other side of the wall. Mako finds a little pocket where he's safe. As now they dive back oh, in once Jackie? more. TP to return from 369. Flandre has been abandoned by the squad of 369. Dives in to find more. Missing the target as the slow lands onto everyone else as well. It's absolute cartilage carnage from the knee cannons in the middle of the fight. TN stops the escape as a triple comes through for Cream. Huge on the Azir. Now it's going to end up with TS finally being able to get the Strake and actually stacking it to a more meaningful advantage, right? I'm excited to see what item breakpoints TS are at now once these backs come off. And for JDG, man, I don't know why they felt so so tempted to have to contest this when it's only top esports second Drake. It did feel a little over the top, didn't it? From the side of JDG, really wanting to stack Drakes of their own, perhaps? Maybe just feeling the pressure, but... Uh, maybe it's just how personal uh, this is. They didn't want to concede anything. I mean, fighting in this choke point just looks so good while TES have full river control. Even the Agao really wasn't in place to be able to follow up with any meaningful damage. Missing does shut it down like you pointed out with the Polymorph, so Cream can't keep following through. And this is where you can tell JDG feel like, hey, like, uh, they're split. They probably know that some of these resets are coming out despite they're not happening on Vision. 
But if you're gonna go for it, then it's like you really have to decisively just pull the trigger to, to engage on one and try to yeah. create that numbers advantage before someone comes back. You give time for the TPs to be back, and 369 is just an absolute menace in the back line. While Kareem can, can play a front to back because they are so split up by those TP positions. Great fight coming out from Top Esports. Great flank coming out from 369. And one thing I noticed as well as the cunning comes on through once again from Jackie Love is uh, Kanavi tried to flash in to protect Flandre. He was going for the big flash, Magnus Storm crashed down, but as he went in, it was <laughs> as TN was diving forwards with the Q. 369 getting so much damage down to the 1v3. We're just gonna flip Barrett again, aren't we? Classic Top Esports as Kanavi. Trying to move forwards, tanking up for his team. Baron will reset. I mean, you can tell TS, right? They just got the resets off. They have more items under the belt. Now Jackie Love has that Lord Dominic's finished up. They are feeling good and ready to fight. JDG, though, not falling for it. I was surprised how much just uh, 369 throwing out a, a Q every here and there, how much that was actually doing <laughs> to them in that standoff. <laughs> not a good sign. It's uh, it's going to be tough, isn't it? 207 for him. But I want to talk about Cream's scoreline right here. 504. Remember, he's the new kid on the block in this series. He's the only player in the server that hasn't been to an international before. And if he wins this series today, he will make it to MSI. It'll be his first ever international. He's on a control mage, the thing that everyone said he could never do. And it feels like he's showing up to start us off today. Baron's still in darkness, 7K. As Top Esports peel and look for Kanabi. They really want to fight off the back of it. Magnet Storm isn't going to do anything. And in he goes with the Empress Divide. Fear Beyond Death shuts down the Zeri. Metal is better than Lightning. The Culling comes through to finish off. Flandre, no, gets over the wall, but stunned in the end and will be eviscerated. Missing tries to escape on a Blast Cone, but it's enough for Top Esports to get Baron. Even without three ultimates being up at the start of that fight, TS still find a way to come out on top. They've completely exploded this gold lead, and now with the Baron, it feels like they should just be able to completely take over the map. Like, how? Again, there's no Lucian ult, no Nami ult, Sejuani ult, nothing is there. But the, just having the damage to get right in, and then Cream again with such an explosive moment to get right on top of the Zeri. And Roller doesn't have time to react before 369's ult is already pulling him to his doom. The fight then goes on long enough to where we get the culling, we get the tidal wave coming back up, which allows him to, to clean up the, the back half of these kills. But it's like, man, if, if JDG didn't have the, the setup there, they're just not going to have it anywhere. But it, it really just goes to show how well TS are controlling these chokes, playing around the vision that they already have, and especially the vision that, that JDG don't to set up for angles like Cream found right there. Yeah, and I think crucially, peeling off the Baron and fighting. You've got the lead. There's no need to 50-50 these ones, and I think perhaps that's a learning from It's not very top esports of you, Joe. Of... <laughs> it's not. It's not. It's not very mojo either, but you know what? It is good for winning games, and uh, top esports will be the better factors of that one for now. Look, they've in my mind, for another two minutes. they've tempered the aggression that they used to have. They're still aggressive, but not as aggressive. You got to keep one of the quirks alive and kicking. So since you've gotten rid of a bit of the aggression, you have to keep the funny barons. Yeah, I'm on board how for goes. that. How I'm goes? I'm very much on board for that. Did you see the amount of damage Cream was getting on that mid lane tower as well? The grasp is here. Obviously, you get to run demolish. Uh, top esports, they see the Weaver's Wall and they're just going to commit past it. And That's one of the downsides of the Talia roll. If you're behind, uh, a lot of the time it can be ignored. It's just like the last one too, where it really has no function. And even in these situations, you could tell JDG, no idea what to do. Typically, you, you, you'd commit to one side of the fight, right? If, if Cream's mid, maybe you could send two people mid, try and pin him down, or you go for the 5v4 bot side. But you could tell JDG, no, that they really can't be able to take the front to back with where items are right now. Konami gets a cleanse from his support. Magnus Storm comes on through, but the front to back just isn't strong enough. Fear beyond death for a fifth kill for 369 the ergot working out the first big lucian working out but more importantly cream stepping up this is his year of control mages and it feels like this is a victory lap here in game number one magnificent performance as the nexus is opened up jackie love survives ruler kicked into the back line but he can't get any damage down and the nexus will be focused top esports start strong in the series immaculate game coming out from the soul 
dual laners. Uh, again, just a great read of the map coming out from TS. I think it's JDG. I'm going to be left questioning of, hey, the, the Rek'Sai plan was clear. A bit surprised he didn't respect the Urgot that we've already seen, but 369 had the time of his life on it. Yeah. It felt a little bit like the, the kind of read of how to approach the game as well was a little bit odd from JDG. Contesting that, was it second or third Drake, that the fight ended up going yeah. so terribly, and then the fights around the top side as well, where, I mean, 369, that's his playground on Urgot. Like, yeah. that sort of mid-game moment where you've already got your cleaver and you're just kind of flailing around in these fights, that's exactly what he wanted. And able to take away the game from it. We're going to head to a break, and then we'll head over to the lounge to break down